Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, today we're talking about the Cold Steel AD-15. This is a, uh, a beast of a knife. All right, this one uh, sports what is called the Scorpion Lock, all right, which was um, an idea by Andrew Demko. Speaking of which, Andrew Demko, 15, AD-15. Uh, this is basically the Cold Steel production version uh, of his knife. Um, and his custom, the Demco version of this, runs for about six seventy-five, dollars uh, which is, uh, you know, very expensive, but, you know, for what it is, I guess it's, uh, it's priced right. This version of it sells anywhere from $175 to $195, all right? It just depends on where you're getting it, depends on which version. This one has the, uh, you know, OD green scales on it. This is available in all black as well, you know, so just, uh, just kind of depends on what dealer you might pick it up from, but I would say on the high end, about $195. Um, I've had this knife for quite a while, uh, pretty much right after it came out. Someone had purchased it and they thought it was a little bit too uh, heavy for them. Um, so they wanted to trade it and I, I worked out a trade right away and I got it very early on since its conception. Uh, I've been sitting on it for a long time. It's kind of on the back burner. I have a ton of knives that I just used a little bit here and there. And they're just, you know, sitting in a specific spot waiting for future reviews. Now, of course, when the uh, the news hit that um, Cold Steel had uh, sold the company to a much larger corporation, um, that's when I really started thinking about, you know, Cold Steel knives and what do I have and kind of want to look through, you know, my inventory and, and see if there's any models that I want to pick up while they're available. I feel like as time goes on, Cold Steel knives will rise in value. They will be uh, harder to get, you know, specific models might be sold out places. And you're not just, I mean, personally, again, who knows what the future holds, but I personally think that even if they continue to make certain models, there'll be some changes, you know, as of right now, no one really knows what the future holds. But uh, I do feel like because it's owned by a larger corporation that what they're going to end up doing is keeping a lot of the similar designs, but making them cheaper, making more of them and making them more available at large retailers like Target or Walmart or outdoor stores, you know, like Dick's Sporting Goods, Gander, you know, Mountain, Gander Outdoors, whatever that is now, Cabela's, you know, places like that, just so that there's more out there, but cheaper. Now, one of the reasons I kind of focus back in on this knife is because obviously with the news, I wanted to see what kind of uh, cold steel knives I had in my inventory and uh, maybe wanted to pick up, you know, a couple models here and there before they become harder to find and more expensive. Um, no one really knows what the future holds, but I still feel like at this point on, you know, the, uh, the knives are just going to get bought up. They'll be harder to find, you know, specific models and stuff. And the prices are going to be driven up. You're going to find them on eBay and stuff for, you know, two times what they're actually worth now. Uh, so again, you know, I highly recommend if you are into, uh, cold steel knives, if there's certain models you like, you know, who knows what the future holds it might not be available. So get them while you can. But uh, this is one that I was actually going to offer up and trade, and now, not so much. Uh, I'm going to hang on to this one. So let's go over some specs on this knife before I get into some of the details and my opinions and stuff. Uh, open, it is 8.5 inches long. All right, closed, it is almost exactly 5 inches. Our blade is a 3.6 inch uh, CPM S35VN flat ground drop point blade. <laughs> the blade profile is pretty ideal for EDC. It's simple, all right? It's very versatile. We have just a little bit of belly up front here, a long stretch of plain edge, all right? We have a tip that's pointy enough to pierce some things, but it's very robust, all right? It definitely leans on the uh, durability side as opposed to, you know, being extra pointy. Uh, there are some very cool knives that come to like needle points and they're cool for certain tasks, but overall they tend to be a little bit fragile and this knife is anything but fragile. Um, the weight here is 6.5 ounces. It is pretty robust. All right, we have uh, full stainless steel liners, as you can see. Let me zoom in. Show you the, uh, the frame there. And this one is sporting the Andrew Demko uh, Scorpion Lock. All right, so this is a really interesting uh, lock. Um, it is extremely, extremely strong. You can see we have a very, very thick bar towards the back here, and it pivots off of this uh, point and it lifts up, okay? And obviously it wants to spring back down. But what's happening here is there's a very substantial pin that goes across here that sits inside that notch in the back of the blade. So when you lift this up, the blade is able to obviously rotate, okay? That's for opening and closing. But with this design, when the knife is closed, it wants to stay closed, okay? Because as you're pulling this blade out, you're putting pressure on that scorpion bar, 
if you call it that, uh, the lock bar. All right, so this acts as a, uh, a way to keep that blade in, okay? So it does not accidentally open the pocket, all right? But there's not that much pressure needed to actually overcome that. So you can, you know, easily open it. It's nice and smooth, opening and closing. And then once we get to the open point, that bar is gonna drop in into that slot and then we're locked, all right? This is, uh, if I just hold the front portion here and try to wiggle this, there is no blade play. It is locked up nice and strong, however, uh, just by design, when you're holding the knife, you're putting further pressure on that lock, okay? So it, it's just, it's going nowhere. There's just no way for this thing to actually fail on you. This knife will never close on you. Um, one of the things that Lim Thompson has, uh, has always focused on with his knives, not only being extremely sharp out of the box and extremely usable, but also extremely safe. He likes to use his knives very hard. If you haven't noticed that, check out one of his videos. Um, and he doesn't want those locks to fail. Now the beauty of this uh, locking mechanism is that it is already extremely strong inherently by design, uh, but the harder you use it, the stronger the lock becomes because you're creating more pressure by squeezing onto your knife even harder. All right, so if you're really using this thing, you're not really using a knife hard in a very loose grip, you're using it in a tight grip, right? So like casual cutting, you have a light little grip, you're just cutting. And then you need to actually focus on something and you're, you're cutting a little harder, it means you're gripping a little harder. But if you're like really using your knife hard and, and really slicing and cutting and whatever you're doing with it, your grip is even harder. So the harder you grip on this, the stronger the lock becomes. However, it's important to note that you don't need much of a grip at all. It's still extremely, extremely strong. And again, you can watch all of Cold Steel's uh, proof of stuff, you know, proof videos to see exactly what these knives will withstand before they actually start failing. And it is amazing. Um, overall, the design is very comfortable. You can see we have a uh, you know finger troll here, and the butt end of the knife does flare out a little bit. Okay, and for my particular hands, which are large, I can still get a perfect grip on this. This is perfect for my hands, so the ergonomics become amazing. If you happen to have a little bit larger hands, there is a small possibility that because both um, these two areas protrude out that your hand might feel just a little bit squeezed in between there, but you have to have really, really large hands. If you have smaller hands, it's not gonna be an issue whatsoever. So I think that for the vast majority of people, this would be a very comfortable design. Um, this has some heavy texturing, you know, on these scales. You can see the grip, let me go in real close here. The grip pattern is almost like a uh, different version of diamond plate, um, but it does create a lot of uh, corners and edges and and um, cuts that really do facilitate a large amount of grip. I mean, this you could tell this is very grippy when you're holding on to it. Um, I haven't really found it to be uncomfortable in hard use, and I have used this knife pretty hard. And that's something else that I wanted to you know point out is that this knife was meant to be used hard, like all cold steel knives. Now I do want to focus a little bit on this Scorpion Lock as far as usability. Some people will find it to be a little awkward. Um, I didn't feel like it was. You know anything crazy it does take a little bit of practice in using it um, you have to in one way or another lift this bar to release that blade okay and there's dozens and dozens of different ways you could do that you could do it like this you could literally use two hands pull it apart move the blade a little bit okay once it's off center like off being straight you can release tension on that bar you know and then close the knife most people you know have quickly realized once getting this knife that you could do it all one-handed it is uh uh, it does have ambidextrous thumb studs, so right hand or left side um, usability. When you open this knife, it's important not to squeeze the whole thing because remember, this bar has to be pushed out. So if you have a tight grip like this, you're, you're pushing against yourself. As you're pushing your thumb forward, your grip is you know, pushing back against that bar. So when opening this, you have to use the butt end, at least this is the easiest way I've done it, is use the butt end here where it's not on the bar, that's where you're, you're kind of gripping. If you look at the other side of my hand, my fingers are on the green part of the scale and behind the pocket clip. Okay, so when I'm opening this, I'm not putting pressure on this bar. All right, that's important to note because I know some people are going to get this and then squeeze hard or whatever, or just pick it up to go to grab it. And as they're pushing, they're pushing back. They're squeezing here and you don't want that. You want this to be able to freely move. All right, so use the butt end of the knife if you have to. Um, the lower you hold it, the easier it is, all right? There's no resistance there because I'm not squeezing that bar, but if I hold it way up here, it's kind of harder to do that. There's just a little bit more pressure that's involved with it. 
it really sounds uh, more complicated than it is. Naturally, you're gonna open this knife and it's fine. I'm just saying some people might tend to squeeze onto that and it becomes a little uncomfortable trying to push that thumb stud. And that's only because you're fighting against yourself. All right, but if you just naturally loosen your grip a little bit in any position, whether you're up high, medium or low on the knife, just have a little bit of a looser grip to allow that bar to open up. All right, there really are a ton of different ways you could figure out how to uh, open this, either one handed or two hands. Uh, two hands is very easy. There's, there's very little resistance when you're pulling on the blade. All right, it's very smooth, easy to open like that. Um, you can open it upside down, of course, change your grip. Uh, there's just whatever is easier for you, but most people are going to want this to be one hand accessible. You're used to pulling your uh, knife out of your pocket, maybe flicking it open. You can't really flick this open like most traditional knives, even though it has the thumb studs here. Um, there is enough resistance there where you need just a little bit of wrist, in my opinion. Like, there you go. I flicked it open, but not so much like we're used to. It's not a quick little flipper. You know, it, it's not like a you know regular a spider co. Or you can kind of you know you know spidey flick it. It is a little bit different. It does take a little bit of of uh, practice with this knife. All right. So as far as closing the scorpion lock, again, multiple ways you could do this. The easiest way I found to do this, well, there's two different ways. If I want to do it one-handed, which most people will probably be interested in, I'm going to pinch this bar, the actual lock bar, and I'm going to push away from the frame. All right, so I'm using my middle finger, all right, on the back here, I'm pushing away. And then once this is lifted up a certain amount of, of space, then your blade freely moves, okay? So you could just use your wrist to shut that. You could flick it shut. You can also lift this bar up with the pointer finger, okay, and do the same thing to open it. You could flick it open. All right, so you can kind of flick this knife shut, flick it open, you know, kind of like you would use uh, an access lock, you know, if you're familiar with that, but it's definitely more difficult. There's more, you know, spring tension uh, on this lock bar. So, you know, it takes a little bit of practice, but you can, of course, do that. To close it with two hands could not be easier. Um, what I do is I use my pointer finger, my uh, middle finger, and my thumb, all right, and I grab that bar. Once you grab that bar, all you're doing is pivoting back. And what happens is the back of the blade hits your hand, and as you continue to move, you end up pulling down on that bar, just naturally, because you're creating pressure on the back of the blade. And then obviously it, it closes. All right, so you're gonna open it two hands, use it and close it, just grab that bar and pivot down. All right, could not be easier if you don't mind you know, using two hands there. Uh, but again, most people are probably going to want to use this one hand. You're probably going to get used to just pulling that bar back, you know, flicking it open and close. All right, which you can do and still use it relatively like a, uh, a normal folder that we're used to carrying. But it definitely takes just a little bit of practice, um, you know, but like anything else, once you start getting used to it, you are good to go. Now, as far as the uh, pocket clip, I do like the pocket clip. It does carry a little bit high. All right, so you can see obviously how much knife is poking out of your pocket. May not like that, you know, it's up to you. Uh, this does land on the heavily textured uh, scale here. I felt a little resistance, you know, in the pocket, uh, taking this in and out. It's not that big of a deal though. It's not gonna tear up your pocket or anything. It's just not like, you know, resting on a nice smooth surface. So it doesn't slide in and out as easy. I did find that like it would lift the pocket up and you know, before the pressure would just, you know, release it from the pocket. Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, it's a comfortable knife. It's a very hard use knife. The uh, CPM S35BN is beyond amazing. It is just awesome. Uh, quickly going back to the pot clip, if you haven't noticed, it is swappable um, for a, a tip up right side or tip up left side, okay? But it is only tip up as most of you guys uh, want anyway. So if you haven't already guessed, uh, I love this knife and I would highly recommend it. Uh, if you uh, are not really into the idea of the scorpion lock, you think that seems kind of awkward or strange or a little foreign to you, uh, check out the AD10. It is basically the triad version of this. It's just a traditional lockback with, of course, the additional uh, assurance of the, the triad pin, essentially. So uh, it, it's a little more of a, a traditional feel. And uh, if you're used to a lockback, then that'll be more natural uh, to carry and use. But they're just hard to use knives. They're worth every penny of their almost $200 price tag, as low as $175, as high as about $200. Um, but I would definitely recommend them. They're just awesome, awesome knives. And again, unfortunately, because of the current events with uh, cold steel, I think as time goes on, you will just see less and less of these available and you will see the price go up and up. Um, so like sometimes people ask me, you know, what knives can I buy for an investment? 
And I usually turn them down right away. It's kind of like, I try to tell them, don't buy knives for an investment. There's way better things you could buy and invest your money in, okay? Buying a knife now to sell it for more later for profit, that's tricky. It's very tricky. Now there's certain sets of knives that you can almost guarantee are gonna go up in value over time. Some discontinued knives, some of course uh, high-end balisongs. I mean, there's a, there's a group of knives that are pretty decent investments as far as that's concerned, but I, I would definitely recommend completely different things if you want to invest money. However, I think it's a safe bet to say that if you happen to buy cold steel knives today, or if you happen to have a couple brand new ones in your collection, to hang on to them, that they will more than likely go up in value with time. Um, I wouldn't, you know, just go out and buy this knife to sell it later for money. Uh, if you were to buy this knife, I'd recommend using it. It's a really, really cool one and uh, a very good user. It is not the most elegant EDC. It is chunky and, and blocky and a little bit heavy, um, but it is a hard use knife, right? So if you're finding yourself using your knives pretty hard and you want a very good locking mechanism and a very, very sharp blade that's going to stay sharp, this is a good option. I am a huge fan of the, uh, the AD-15. And I might have to try out the AD-10 in the future because I've never had one before, but uh, I do like the design. I mean, the Scorpion Lock is very cool. It's different, and I do like that. But I'd have just as much confidence in the AD-10. But, uh, but yeah, that's all. Let me know down in the comment section if you've rocked either the AD-10 or the AD-15 and what you thought of yours, but I've been very impressed with this one. Very happy with it. And uh, it is a lot cheaper than the custom you know, version of the knife. Uh, also, let me know if you have the, the, the Andrew Demko Custom you know, what do you think of that? And if you happen to have both, how do they compare? Now here's something that's uh, a little noteworthy is the custom version of this knife has the exact same blade steel. It has the CPM S35BN for 675 in and around. So the extra $475 is not really in materials. It's in the fact that you're paying Andrew to, you know, take the time to make it himself as, a, as opposed to, you know, on an assembly line. So just something to, uh, to think about. But if you happen to have the uh, the custom, let me know what you think of yours. Of course, I'd love to try it, um, but I'm very happy with this one. If in case I never get to try the uh, the custom version, um, I still feel like I'm not missing out. So anyway, that is it for now. Let me know if you have the 8015, the 8010, or the custom Scorpion Lock from Andrew Demko. Love to hear your uh, thoughts and opinions on it down in the comments section. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.